when we're solving a quadratic, uh, x squared minus 2x minus 15, the first thing we want to do is see if we can factor this so we can find the critical points. If you recall, using bottoms up method, we look for what multiplies to give us the outside, which is, um, what, 3 times 5 is 15, but when we add them, we need to get a negative 2, so 1 needs to be negative and 1 is positive. So I'm going to check that. Multiply these two together to get negative 15. Check. Add these two factors together to get the middle term. Check. Then you always put it over this first term, which is a 1x, and you split the x's. And then right from the bottoms up if you use this method. So it's going to be x plus 3, x minus 5. Now, when you set that equal to 0, you're going to find the critical number. So I say x plus 3 equals 0, x minus 5 is equal to 0. Solve each one of these. I find out that x, one of my critical numbers is 3, and one of my critical numbers is going to be 5. So that's the things I'm going to be working with. Um, and so set notation isn't as big a deal right now. We're not going to work about that, but I'm going to take my critical values and put them on a number line. Now I need to find out when this is true, when my original statement up here is true. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to test some number over here. Well, if this is negative 3, I can pick any number that I want to be on this side. So I'm just going to pick one to the left of that, which is negative 4. And I'm going to plug negative 4 into this original equation, which is x squared minus 2x minus 15, less than or equal to 0. And I'm going to test negative 4. So everywhere x is at, I'm going to plug in negative 4 and test it. Negative 4 squared is 16. Negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8. So 16 minus 15 is 1 plus 8. 9 is less than or equal to 0. 9 is not less than or equal to 0, so that is going to be false. So this was false when I tested it. I need to test this region. Well, the easiest number to test between a negative number and a positive number is 0. So if I came over here and in my original function, I test 0. 0 squared minus 2 times 0 minus 15. Everywhere there's an x, I plug in a 0. This gives me 0 minus 0 minus 15. And it says negative 15 is less than or equal to 0. Yes, a negative number is less than 0. Yes, I'm saying yes, I'm writing false. Yes, this is true. Negative 15 is less than 0, so I say this was true okay and then I'm gonna test anything bigger than 5 I can pick any one number 6 10 15 500 I'm gonna pick an easy one so the one next to it's 6 and then I'm gonna come up here plug in a 6 6 squared that 2 stays at 2 so where x is at I'm gonna plug in a 6 6 squared is 36 Minus 12 minus 15 is less than or equal to 0. And then 36 minus 12 is going to be 24. Minus 15 is 9 is less than or equal to 0. 9, that is false. So when I say this is false, I go back and my answer is going to be where it's true. So it's true from here to here. Now, there's a bracket there, so that means this is included and this is included. So my interval notation, I read the true part where it's included from left to right, would be bracket negative 3, bracket 5 as my solution. And I drew my number line there instead of on this one. All right, we're going to do a similar thing with number 6. We're going to find the critical values first of all by doing bottoms up but multiplies to give you 3 times negative 4 uh, adds to give you the middle number which is an 11 so 
these two numbers will get me a, an 11, but I need to make sure when I multiply them, I get negative 12. When I add them, I get negative 11, so that would mean I would need to do that. Then you always put it back over the first term. In this case, there's a 3 there, so it's going to be over a 3x, over a 3x, and we always reduce. Divide by 3, divide by 3, right from the bottom up. 1x minus 4. This does not reduce, so I write from the bottom up, and it's 3x plus 1. Now, that's the factors are just going to give us our critical values. We set them equal to 0 to find out what our critical values are. So x is equal to positive 4, because you add 4 to both sides. For this one's a little bit longer, so I'll solve it out. And we find out that our two critical points are going to be negative one third and a positive four. Now we need to go back and test regions. I'm going to move this out the way now. I can pick any number to the left of this that's negative, and I'm just going to pick something easy. I'm going to test negative one. Go back into your original function. Everywhere there's an x, put a parenthesis and plug in negative 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1, so 3 times 1 is 3. Negative 11 times negative 1 is positive 11 minus 4. 14 minus 4 is 10 is greater than 0. That is true. That means this is part of my answer. Now, this does not have the equal to bar like this one did. This one gave me brackets. This one will give me parentheses. I need to test some number between a negative number and a positive number. The easiest thing is test 0. So come back over here. I'm going to test 0. Plug a 0 in everywhere there's an x. So you get 0 minus 0. Negative 4 is greater than 0. That is false. Since this is false, I will not shade it in. Okay, and now I want to test something in this region, which is anything that's greater than 4. So I'm going to pick a number just to the uh, right of that. So I'm going to pick 5. I can pick any number I want. I could have picked 6, 7, 8. I'm just going to pick something fairly close. So 5. 5 squared is 25 times 3. It's going to be 75. And then minus 55 minus 4. So it's that 16 is greater than 0. So you get true. And that means this is true, but because it's a parenthesis up there, uh, it doesn't have the bar, it's a parenthesis. Now, interval notation says name this thing left to right. The very first thing I come to is a negative infinity. It's a negative one-third parenthesis. Because there's a gap here, I'm going to put union. It picks back up from four, and it goes to the arrow. So that's going to be your interval notation. Okay, rational inequalities, the quotient possibly changes sign only where the x values make the numerator or the denominator equal to zero. So the first thing we're going to do to find critical values is the denominator is equal to zero when x is equal to three. So that's going to be one of our critical points. So that's when the denominator, we take the denominator, set it equal to zero. The other case in which we solve this thing. So if I was to put this over one and cross multiply, then I'm going to have uh, six is greater than or equal to, and it's hard to see now because I wrote over it, but that's four parentheses x minus three. So now we're going to solve this inequality to find our other critical point. Distribute. 4x minus 12, solve for x. So we're going to get 18 is greater than or equal to 4x. Divide both sides by 4. Reduce, divide a 2 out of both of them. So you're going to get 
9 halves is greater than or equal to x. Now, because this is a bracket, I like to put that, and this is read the statement x is greater than or equal to 9 halves. And since the variable is not on the left, I can't shade the way the arrow points, but I know it's greater than that. And it's a bracket because of the bar. Um, actually, I can't shade that yet. This just tells me my critical point. I have to test the regions just like I just did. So I know um, 9 is approximately 4.5. Okay, so on the number line, I have a 3, and I have a 4.5, which is the fraction 9 halves. Okay, I have to test these for critical points um, and do the test on them as well. So let's pick a number to the left of 3 and test it. I'm going to move this out of the way so we can see my original problem. 6. A number less than 3, I'm going to test 2. So if I put a 2 in right there, it would be 2 minus 3 greater than or equal to 4. So 6 over negative 1. Negative 6 is greater than or equal to 4. That's false. Okay, I'm going to test the number between 3 and 4.5. Let's test 4. I'm going to go back into the original, 6, and then I'm testing 4 this time. So where x is at, I'm going to put a 4. So that's 6 over 1, which is just 6, and it's saying 6 is greater than or equal to 4. That's true. And then we want to test the number to the right of 4.5, so let's just test 5. 5 minus 3, so 6 divided by 5 minus 3 is 2, so 6 divided by 2 is 3 is greater than or equal to 4, and no, that's false. So my inequality is true here, because it's a bracket, I'm going to have, I mean, because there's a bar, I'm going to have brackets. So interval notation would be bracket 3, 2, bracket 9 halves.